Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreamy, and on today's video tutorial, we're gonna make a super cute wreath. Um, how do I know it's gonna be super cute? Because my craft room is a complete disaster. And usually, when the projects are messy, I think they turn out better. So anyways, we are gonna be using some of this Dollar Tree nautical, what is it called? Nautical rope made out of cotton. We're gonna use a Dollar Tree wreath form, ring wreath, and this one is 14 inches around. You could use something like, this is a little starfish, which could be super cute, or even a smaller ring. Um, we're gonna be using some of this. This is that fishing net decor from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to make rolled rosettes and we're gonna do a pretty little thing on the front, a combination of seashells and rosettes. What else? We're gonna, so we're gonna be using some canvas duck fabric, some low temperature hot glue. I have a ton of things to show you, um, other projects, other wreath ideas, and I wanna give you some suggestions in case you can't get these exact same things, there's other ways that you can do this project. So, as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. All right, so I guess let's start. Let's start with the, um, the fishing net decor, okay? Why am I using this? I'm using this because... I thought I had more of this. And this morning I went to two Dollar Trees. And of course, last week, they had tons of the nautical rope. Today, none. So I'm improvising with something different. Okay, so this is what this fishing net stuff looks like. And we're just gonna be wrapping it around the inside three bits of this wreath. And you, I could have done this, which just was what my original plan was. Let me show you what that would look like. But I didn't have enough. So, um, so it would have looked like that. Anyways, if I can get my hands on some more, I may do one in the small room just to give you the look. But you could alternatively use some of this. This is that Dollar Tree decorative jute rope that's cream and blue. You could use some of this Dollar Tree decorative nautical rope that's kind of a, a natural color. I mean, we could even use one of these Dollar Tree hula hoop, or not hula hoop, uh, hula dance skirts, you know. Uh, so there are tons of different things that we could be using, but this is what we're using for our project. Okay, so let's do the fishing net first. I'm gonna just start where I left off here. And I'm going to put some glue on the back of my project. Just a little bit. And this is why you wanna use a low temperature hot glue gun for this project, because you're gonna get your fingers in the glue for sure. Okay, so I just attached it to the back and then all I'm gonna be doing is just weaving it around and around and around and around. I'm gonna figure out a better way to do this so it doesn't take so long. And then I'm gonna show you how to cut the, how to take apart this, this rope. I'm gonna tell you how long to cut the pieces I'm gonna give you all that information. Okay, hopefully this, whoa, whoopsie, I didn't go far enough for a couple of times. Um, I'm gonna tell you how long to cut it. I'm gonna give you all that information. Okay, what do I have going on here? Something. Okay, I tried to get a little head start on this so you wouldn't have to watch me doing all the basics. And um, what have I got going on here? Oh, there we go. So I'm just going. I 
And once you go around this inside ring, you just kind of want to pull your net flat. So what is everyone up to today? Who's crafting? And what are you making? Tell me in the comments. Who, um, tell me if you're a wreath maker, because I am really not too much of a wreath maker um, when it involves a lot of flowers. I'm not great at that. My sister, on the other hand, is awesome. She, she makes all kinds of beautiful things like that. I'm a better just crafter than floral type of wreath maker. I would love to see pictures, if you guys have them, of any wreaths that you have made that you think would be a fun kind of a project for this page. Hoping that I have enough. Go around that one one more time and then I'll, one more time and then I'll spread it out. So this is what I'm doing. I am wrapping this fishing net around the inside three rings, and then I'll show you how we do the slip knot, how we take that uh, Dollar Tree cotton rope apart, and um, I'll show you how to do that. I don't have any more of this <laughs> fishing stuff, so... I'm hoping that this is going to work. If not, we'll improvise with something else. Deborah Boyce says she makes wreaths and flowers. So does Angela, Angelia. <laughs> she, um, okay, somebody's crafting chicken pasta tonight. I don't know what that means. Does that mean you're cooking or does that mean you're doing a craft? Okay, we're gonna just have to make this work and I may have to cover up this blank spot with some flowers. So let's bring it down here and I'm gonna glue it down. Put these guys out of the way. And I'll also trim off the end of it too. Really the more difficult part to figure out for this project was the slip knots. And I'm gonna show you all of that in just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna Boy, if I had one more package of that stuff, I'd be set up perfectly. I'm gonna use one of these little Dollar Tree clamps just to hold that on right there. Okay, so let's talk about the slip knots. They're gonna go all the way around this outside ring and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load them up as much with as much of this rope that I have um, so that it's really full and you could take a hairbrush and brush the ends out, but I'm kind of liking these squiggly, uh, twisty looking spots. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna have to really fluff this later. Okay, so 
what you're gonna wanna do is um, decide how long you want your slip knots to be. I decided on 10 inches and I made a piece of <laughs> painter's tape that is 10 inches and I realize it's gonna be hard to see it here, but uh, let's pull this out for a few minutes. Okay, so this is telling me how long I'm gonna cut my pieces. And this is one piece of the rope. And first thing you're gonna do is cut the little tape off at one end. I'm just gonna cut this little bit off right here. Okay, and then you're gonna untwist the pieces. We could see it on the blue. Oh, well, it's okay. I'm not gonna glue on this. I'm just gonna show you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take these three pieces and I'm gonna stretch them out to see how long is 10 inches. Can you see that right here? And I'm just gonna cut them. And I'll set these aside. Let's do some more. And I really like how these pieces are kind of curly. Hello from Southern California, Sherry Swanson Becker. How are you doing? I am in Georgia and you guys, it's supposed to, yesterday was 98, which was a record. And today is supposed to be 97, which means it's gonna be hotter than heck um, because it's gonna be over 100 with the, how it feels because we are super humid here. Emma says she likes the curly as well. I do too. So let me just do a couple more of these and then we'll start attaching them. And then if you've never seen how I make these rolled rosettes using canvas duck, uh, that's what I'm going to show you next. So stay with me. And we're going to do a decoration on this wreath that is um, a combination of the rolled rosettes. Let's do just one more set. The rolled rosettes with a bunch of these seashells that I have. Um, yeah, so it's going to be really fun. As soon as I cut this one, I'm going to show you some of these wreaths and different things that I have behind me. They are past projects that we've done. I do love to make wreaths, but I never make the floral kind. Um, okay, I can come back and get more of this if it turns out that I need it. But what you're gonna end up with from each thing is three that are 10 inches long. That's just what I decided for my project. Um, if you have a smaller wreath form, and I told you guys that this one was 14 inches, then you might want your uh, pieces to be shorter than 10 inches. Okay, so I pulled this out. This is not a wreath, but this is sort of a summary project that I did a couple weeks ago. I made this sand dollar, or starfish, out of vintage buttons, and this is painter's drop cloth. Um, all right, this was a wreath that I did. Um, I'm trying to remember, when did we do this? It's been several months. And this is Dollar Tree rope. It's that stuff I showed you just a few minutes ago. Braided, it's on one of these wreath forms that I just wrapped with some burlap ribbon. And then these are the rolled, these are the pulled string flowers that I love to make with some stiff um, burlap leaves. This is not a wreath, but this was one of my favorite projects. I did this two or three years ago. It's a embroidery hoop. This is one of those Dollar Tree hula skirts, and these are just slip knots, just exactly like what we're gonna be doing. And then I threaded some wood beads and tied them on here. And I think this is just very boho. I love this project. And then, this is another wreath that we made. This is the kind of rope that we're using today from Dollar Tree. 
And I use the Dollar Tree Square form for that. Oops, I don't know what that is. Um, and I braided it. Ow. And then I, um, and you know, it's totally up to you how you want top or bottom. And then these are hula skirts with some seashells. This is one of those Dollar Tree sand dollars. This is one of the Dollar Tree um, starfish. So I am going to replay this video this week. So be watching for it uh, because this was a, that was, that was a great project. I loved it. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. All right, so let's come back to this. And basically, I have a whole pile that I cut before I came live. And we're just going to start folding it in half and putting the fold through the, um, this outer loop. And then you pull the tails through it. Whichever way you decide to go, just do the whole thing that same way. So my slip knot is kind of on the outside. And this is not hard at all. It's just a little time consuming. That's why I tried to get part of it done before I came live. So fold it in half, poke it into the outer ring and then pull your tail through the inside of that loop, and that is a slip knot. I did notice one thing about this Dollar Tree, whoops, cotton rope, and that is that some of the um, rope is thicker like this one, this piece, for example. This is a third of a rope, and this is a third of a rope. So um, I just decided to kind of mix these fatter pieces in with what else I had on here. So be aware of that. And you do kind of want to pull your two tails about the same length out. You can see that once you get going, it is pretty easy to do. This, the cutting the, the rope and separating it, that is a good watching TV kind of a project. This other stuff you really kind of do need to have a table to work on. I'm going to cram things in as tight as I can. And then we'll come back and pull our slip knots tight. So what do you guys think? Um, do you understand what we're doing here? These are just a whole bunch of slip knots. And this is that fish, that netting, that decor netting from Dollar Tree. get this basically done and then I will show you the fun part which is the decoration part and we're gonna make some rolled rosettes so if you've never seen that those are so fun let me just warn you they are super addictive once you learn how to do this you're gonna want to make a million of them and then you're gonna be asking me what can I do with all of the rolled rosettes that I've made. It's like making the pulled string burlap flowers. Those are addicting too. Hopefully I have enough cut and ready to go that we can just get this whole thing covered. I'm not gluing these down. I'm just filling this space up pretty full. And I'll come back and tighten all the slip knots and, you know, adjust the tails if some of them are not even. So who thinks, oh thank you for sprinkling, I forgot to mention that. If you like this video or this idea, 
or anything that we're doing here at DIY Dreaming, I would love it if you, if you would consider sprinkling this video to your social media, which is basically, I get this question all the time, it's just sharing it to your Facebook page or if you're in any crafting groups that allow that, um, that would be awesome. But not all craft groups want you to share other crafters videos in there. So just be, you know, considerate about what their rules are. But anyways, that is what sprinkling is. What size wreath did I use? This is a 14 inch. Here's the And it's hard to see with the glare. It's 14 inches. And this one was kind of a silvery color. Um, these two are smaller. So if you want to do a quicker project, just do a smaller reform. Okay, I think we might possibly have enough. If not, we'll cut some more. I don't know where I'm gonna put this. Uh, hi, Alice, how are you doing? So let me know what your questions are as we're going along. I will try to catch some of them while I'm live. The ones I can't catch because I'm looking at my project or concentrating, I'll come back and answer. I mean, I think I have pretty much answered all the basic stuff here in this video. That's always my aim, but the rope looks like this, and it comes from Dollar Tree. It's called Nautical Rope Cotton, and I don't remember how many feet are on it. Does it say? 11 feet. So that's a lot of rope. And then I um, I untwirled it because this is these are uh, it's it's like a braid or a twist of three pieces. So that rope has three pieces in it. If you can visualize that. So I untwirled it, and I used a piece of painter's tape on my desk that's ten inches long, just as my little guide to quickly. Um, cut a whole bunch of pieces. And what else? The stuff here in the center wrapped around it is fishing net decor, also from Dollar Tree. I think we're going to need a couple more pieces. So we'll do that. And this is just your basic slip knot. I did all of them the same direction so that they all look uniform. You could brush these out if you wanted, um, but I'm not going to. This could be a cute centerpiece as well if you wanted to put a bunch of candles or and some seashells or something. That could be really cute too. Okay, I need to cut a few more pieces. So you just untwirl the kind of twist that these guys have. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to make rolled rosettes, so stay with me. Oops. I don't think I've done rolled rosettes in a while. Um, we're just gonna use this. Okay, this does not wanna to stick to my little uh, mat. Um, I haven't made rolled rosettes in a while, so we're going to make some of those. We'll probably make three. I have already made one, and then we're going to attach that to our wreath with some seashells. And I got out a variety of different doodaddy kind of things that we could use if we wanted. Um, like we could make some of those flowers, like this, these pulled string flowers using some cream. I'm going for a very kind of monochromatic look, but this is that four and a half inch wide burlap ribbon that you can pick up at Walmart in the floral section. 
So I don't know, maybe, maybe I will come back and do some of that. Uh, with that, I don't know. This is one of those projects where I have a general idea of what we're doing, but not specific. And usually I know almost, you know, I get everything so ready that I pretty much know exactly where the project is heading. Today, not so much. So like I said at the beginning, um, there's different looks that you could do with this. I mean, you might decide it's too long and want to come back and do eight inch pieces. I don't know. I just started with 10, 10 inches. Um, but you can come back and brush them out and then they look more, they look less curly and they look more fringy. You want to do each section as full as you can. Put some over here. Okay, wait, I'm putting these on backwards. Oh well, it does not matter. I can come back and fix that. Let's see, where else do we need some? We need a little more in this section. Okay, this is the last one I have cut. So we're gonna go with this, but I might fiddle with this some more when when I'm done. Okay. And I think this is pretty good down, so I'm going to cut off these extra bits. All right, so this is the start of it. And now that I'm looking at it and seeing how it's kind of floppy, I'm kind of thinking that maybe it would be a better centerpiece for summer. But Either way, so then you're just going to come back and pull all of your ends tight so your slip knots are tight. And now let's build some rolled rosettes. Okay, and we're using this canvas duck cloth that I purchased uh, this last week at Hobby Lobby. It was on sale, it was um, $10 a yard. And it's kind of a great oatmeal color that looks great with this ribbon. And um, so it was $10 a yard and it was 40% off. So it was around $6 a yard. Usually I get my canvas done at Walmart, but lately, where did I buy the wireframe? Dollar Tree. It looks like this. Um, but lately there's never any money in my, in the fabric department of the craft area at Walmart. So I just decided while I was at Hobby Lobby to get some. So I took a little nick into this. I'm just gonna pull and tear some strips. I'm not gonna tear up this whole entire thing because I don't need to. And then I like these to be pretty fringy. So I'm gonna pull the strings off. And I'll tell you how wide this is, but it's, it's not, um, it doesn't have to be any particular width or length. Okay, this is about one and a fourth inches wide. Okay, these um, rolled rosettes always start with a knot in one end. That's the center of your rosette. And I cut some squares that we'll build a rosette on. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna put some glue in the center of this. 
and I'm going to stick my rosette in that. Gail, you can come back and watch this video on replay as soon as I'm done. So, and I don't know if everybody knew that, but these videos that I do here, they're available on replay, you know, as long as Facebook is a thing. I have videos here on this page going back three, four years. If you want to see how terrible I was when I first got started and didn't know how to flip my camera or, or have decent lighting or decent sound. I know my sound is not great, but I have not figured that out yet. Anyways, so you can come back and I do, I take a lot of time with my videos to get them labeled so that you will know what, what you're looking for. And you can just scroll, click the videos tab, scroll, 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 scroll until you see what you want to watch. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm kind of folding this strip in half and I'm rolling and twisting it around the center and I'm putting a, a bead of glue around it each time. The messier, the better, I think. So this is a great flower for me. And you can see, you just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. and pushing it down into your glue. So we're kind of twirling and twisting and winding this around the center. Go over to here and then I'm gonna say good. Mm, let's go. You can do this technique with absolutely any kind of fabric that you want. All right, so I'm going to cut this tail off right here. And then we're going to trim. I'm looking to see, is everything glued down pretty good? Yeah, for the most part it is. So I'm going to trim the, the fabric that is glued onto off. And because it's the same color, it doesn't have to be completely cut off and perfect. Because you won't see it, it's gonna disappear. Okay, so this is the shape, which they're never really very round. I'm gonna take this tail and I'm gonna, um, oops, I need to clean my glue gun. I'm just gonna fold it and tuck it around behind. All right, well generally I like to clean my glue gun off with a dryer sheet, but I don't have any in here, so I'm gonna just get, whoops, oh no. I pulled my tip off, I hope that's, it might be time for a new glue gun. I'm just gonna work with what I have going on. Okay, so then I'm gonna put some glue on the back and pull this little tail around and glue it to the back. And for um, those of you that wanna take a screenshot, this is what they look like. This is the front, they're messy, and this is the back. You can see I just glued the tail on there. Okay, let's quick make one more because I like to do um, my accents in, in one, three, or fives. Odd numbers, I think, look best. So I'm gonna show you how quick you can make a rolled rosette. And whichever way feels most comfortable, comfortable for you to twirl and twist, go that direction. I usually go towards my right. I want to make this one just a little bit smaller. This is definitely where you could get some glue on your hands, so you want to be using a low temperature hot glue gun. Um, I have a Sure Bonder. It's nothing fancy. It's probably time that I go get a new one. They're around $10.
and you can get them everywhere. Um, I usually buy them either, it's a mini, and it does have a cord. I can live with that. Um, I usually get mine either at Hobby Lobby or Walmart, and they're about the same price everywhere. And then I do actually use the Sherbonder glue sticks that look like this. These are the ones, um, mini size, and they're all temperature, but I use them with my low temperature hot glue gun. Okay, let me just quickly wrap this up, and then we'll fiddle. And when I'm all done, I will beautify this. And probably within the next day or so, I'll get pictures of it. I'll put those here in these comments as well as just as a separate post on DIY Dreaming. So to review, this is painter, not painter's drop cloth, I'm sorry. This is canvas duck fabric that I'm using. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. Normally I buy it at Walmart. Um, but like I said, Walmart never has anyone in that department and it's kind of a pain to have to go hunt someone down. Um, my Walmart also makes you do all your own checkout. They don't even have people doing that anymore, which I really don't like. Anyway, so this time I bought my canvas duck fabric at uh, Hobby Lobby. They are never, ever, ever round. <laughs> they just aren't. That's, uh, I don't know, a fact. Okay, so let's fiddle with our um, wreath. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my mind and I'm gonna decide that this is gonna be for a summer centerpiece. I think with the little floppy slip knots, um, it would be much prettier that way. Okay. And also, I think I am going to rework this one section right here. I'm going to get some more of the um, fish, fishing net decor so that it's not so skinny right there. So let's glue right here. All right, um, I have three rosettes. They're kind of all different sizes. And my thought was to do like a couple of seashells around them. So let's do, let's do a big one right here. These are seashells that I actually, I was so fortunate. Um, I found these at my local Goodwill, a huge bag of them. It was probably six or seven dollars, but um, oh my gosh, I was so excited. Okay. This one might be too big. We'll use this one. And I'm gonna do, um, smaller one with that. So I probably have um, like five dollars worth of materials into it right now, which I think is great. And I might put this on my, in my kitchen on the kitchen table. Okay, so I have three shells, and then I'm gonna put my larger rosette right here. And I may come back and add some more to it. And then 
Let's do, I'm kind of wishing I didn't even include that seashell. Can I get to that without ruining my project? No, okay, I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna sort of ignore it and glue my next rosette right there and then we'll put some smaller seashells on here. So pretend there's not a seashell under there. You would add a little color to the flowers. Well, I have some of this that I was thinking about adding. And you know, I never leave my projects. Um, yeah, I think I'll be looking for some other seashells. I never leave my projects the way I finish them when I'm done with the live. I always think about it a little bit and come back and fiddle. And I end up adding different things. So this is what we have. Um, it's not done, but I hope you like the general idea of it. So I will add a bunch of kind of fluff seashells and things around it. And I'll try to pick some that have darker colors. Use your hot glue gun to reheat the glue around the seashell. You want to remove, that's a good idea. Instead, I just glued my second rosette right over the top of it. And I think when I take pictures, I'll find a charger that I can put under here and I'll put three different size candles, battery operated candles, and then I'll probably fill in with the seashells. Or a mirror, oh my gosh, that would be fabulous. How much rope do you need? Okay, that's a great question. I would say at least three of these. They're, they're 11 feet each, and then I cut each length of my rope. I untwirled it and I cut them 10 inches, but as I'm looking at it now, honestly, I think you could probably get away with eight inch long pieces. And so it will be pretty, I promise. I don't know if you like it right now, but this is just the start of an idea. And um, if my Dollar Tree had had everything that I need, or if I had been smart and stocked up on that rope and that fishing stuff, fishing that stuff, when they had it, then I might have done it a little bit different. But now I'm looking at it, I think it's gonna be a much prettier centerpiece than a wreath. So, okay, so I have lots more projects coming up. I'm working on all kinds of different things, different kinds of projects, different mediums. Um, and if you haven't already liked and followed DIY Dreaming, there's three dots up here if you're watching on Facebook. If you click on that, I think that's where you would do a like or a follow and also where you could turn on your notifications. And then if you do a this, that's a thumb or a this, that's a heart or say something to me in the comments, then Facebook interprets that in their mysterious algorithms as saying that you're interested and they're much more likely to show you anything that I have coming up. So I always recommend at the end of every video that you do that. If you're watching on YouTube, I would love for you to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you guys have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, if you missed the beginning, as soon as this is no longer live, you can come back and click on it and watch as much as you want from the start. And that's where I answered all of the questions about lengths and everything. Do I have a stencil that says wash? Oh, we do. Okay, Magnolia does have an adorable stencil that says wash your hands because Jesus and germs are everywhere. Something like that. And it's super cute. I actually have something in my kitchen that says that. Um, so I didn't see who asked that question, but I'll get you that, um, a direct link to that stencil when I'm finished. And if you missed the beginning, come back, watch this on replay. 
uh, I have lots of fun stuff coming up this week. And hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll be sharing pictures and ideas and stuff on and off all day today. Um, so I'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it.